thankful for those words of hope and encouragement, and it really is a great honor and privilege for me to pastor a church that has so many active duty military personnel as well as veterans, and we're appreciative of your service and your sacrifice and that of your family. And of course, on this weekend, we think of those so many brave men and women who've given their lives on battlefields all across this world for the freedoms that we have today. And again, I hope you have a fantastic Memorial Day weekend. We are a gospel-centered church. Now, that means, of course, that we are followers of Jesus Christ, that we have a ministry that centers on the person and work of Jesus Christ. And the gospel refers to the reality that spiritual salvation, forgiveness of sins, it's found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. It acknowledges his death, his burial, and his resurrection. But I love the very definition of the word gospel. It means good news. Therefore, if we are a gospel-centered church, we understand we're a church that has the joy of giving out good news. Now, I think most of you would agree with me that these are days in which we could use some good news because there's a lot of bad news. And if what I read is correct, a lot of this bad news is putting a lot of us in a bad mood. Many people today are in a bad place mentally and emotionally and, and even spiritually. I read an interview with a doctor, and the doctor was asked the question, if America was suffering from post-traumatic stress due to all that we've been going through, and, and in that case, Dr. Joseph Porteous, he responded by saying, our society is definitely in a collective state of trauma. But he went on to explain that we can't have post-traumatic stress because we're not in the post part yet. We're still in the middle of it. So we're dealing with stress that's brought on by a trauma that our collective nation is going through together. And of course, we all know the power that stress can rain down on us in our lives. We know it can be very, very destructive. I think that there's no time quite like this that we could ever compare to, but if we were to go back in our nation's history to another time when our nation has been so gripped by something together, we'd we could go back to the events of 9-11. And we know that following those events that the rates of depression and alcoholism and on were dramatically increased in, in New York and beyond. And so many in our time and in our space are reporting the negative impacts of ongoing stress. Some today are dealing with this virus that's ravaging our world. Some are just gripped by fear that they'll get the virus. They're dealing with all of that. Others have lost investments as the stock market has been on a roller coaster ride. Some have lost jobs. We're all aware that our economy is suffering. We are definitely dealing with some traumatic times. And it's important that you understand that this trauma, it, it has the potential to rob you of your joy and peace in life. But you also need to know that this trauma does not have the power to rob you of your peace and your joy in the course of your life. You need to know that. You see, if you know the Lord today, you are an overcomer in Jesus Christ. You are not a victim of the circumstances in which we live. We don't have to look to a season or an event through which we go and point at that as the reason that we can't because in Christ, we most certainly can. We can do all he would have us to do and we can be all that he has called us to be. I'm saying today that as people of faith, we have the birthright in Jesus Christ to look at every day as the gift that it is from God with a heart filled with faith and hope and optimism knowing that he's got something very special that he's doing and that he wants to include us in that work. We have a passage before us today in the Psalms that teaches us how to have a great day every day all the day. It's a message I am very excited to bring to you. Can you imagine a message from God's word teaching us how to have a great day every day all the day. Now, it doesn't teach us in this passage that we're going to study to bury our heads in the sand and to ignore all of the difficulty, but this psalm we're going to study, Psalm 25, it teaches us to survey our situation and then look to our Savior for the help and the guidance that we need in life. So today we're looking to Psalm chapter 25, and I'll be reading in verses 4 and 5. As I read aloud, I'll encourage you to follow along with me. The Bible says in Psalm 25 and verse 4, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all 
the day. And I want you to take note of that expression, all the day. And there's great encouragement for us in these words. Let's ask God's blessing on our study together today. Our Father, we are so thankful that you are indeed a God of love, a God of mercy, a God of grace. We know you're a holy God and a just God, but we're grateful through the person and work of Jesus Christ we can be redeemed and that we can live the life that you called us to live. May this message today be an encouragement to all who hear it. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I didn't want to miss a single moment. I made the 769-mile drive with only one stop for gas. While there, I made every morning count. I'd get up early. I'd get a cup of coffee. I'd go to my favorite chair where I could look out and see the Rocky Mountains and the beautiful wilderness of Colorado. I had a list of things I hoped to accomplish in the three days that I was there. Uh, I wanted to see my family, which I did. I wanted to cut some trees that had fallen down, and I cut those trees up and split them into firewood that we'll use in the winter. Uh, I wanted to do some reading. There were some things I wanted to get through in, in the way of personal study, and I wanted to seek some counsel from someone that I greatly respect. So our trip home, I had a couple thoughts that came to my mind. The, the first thought was, when is this drive ever going to be over? That's a long time to spend in a car. But there was a second thought that's a little bit more appropriate for our topic today. The second thought that I had was, man, what a great trip this was. It was everything I hoped it would be. Now, I, I want you to wonder with me what would happen if, if our lives were lived the way that trip was lived. I want you to imagine what our lives could look like if we approach each day in that very way. W what if we excitedly entered each day with a set of specific goals in mind? What if we refuse to let the happenings of our life determine the happiness of our lives. Many of the Psalms, we get a pretty good idea of the context, the background, what was going on when they were written. And Psalm 25 is one of those where we don't really get all of the backstory. But what we do know about the 25th Psalm is that it was inspired by God himself and that God used David to be the one who would write it for us. And that's important because if anybody knew what stress was all about, David would have known. He endured an awful lot of stress in the course of his life. And what we find here is really a pattern that can help us face each day with an attitude that will allow us to make the most of it for the Lord. He shares some tools, if you would, that will help us to have a good day every day, all the day. As we look here, we see what must be done. The first element we find in this study today is this. You must discover your destiny for that day. Discover your destiny for that day. Now, in the beginning of verse 5, the Bible says this, as David is praying to the Lord. He says, show me thy ways, O Lord. Now, before we get into what it was that David was asking the Lord there, I want to take a moment to share with you what David was not asking. David was not going to the Lord to say, God, I've got in my mind's eye an idea of what I want to do today. Would you, God, get on board with my plans? That's not what David was praying here at all. He was saying, God, would you help me know where you would have me to go in my life this day? He said, show me thy ways. And the word ways is also a very important word. As you might expect, it refers to the distance of a journey. It can refer to the destination of a journey. But the word ways also refers, when you're speaking of a person or people, to their manners or their customs. And so David was not just asking the Lord where he would have him to go that day. He was asking the Lord how he would have him to go and how he would behave in the course of it all. Now, I want you to know I'm an advocate of planning. I even believe in long-term planning. But if this season has taught us anything, it's the fact that we need to realize our plans have to be brought to the Lord and He's free to change them in any way He sees fit. In the New Testament book of James, we find an occasion of a couple men who had big plans and they had a big lesson to learn. In James chapter 4, verses 13 through 15, we read of this where the Bible says, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we'll go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It's even a vapor that appeareth and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, 
If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. You see, all of our plans need to have that caveat that says, if the Lord will. God, here are my plans, but I want to bring them to you. I want your seal of approval on what it is I do and where it is that I go. And so we, we learn here, first, we need to surrender our plans to God. But secondly, we need to realize that God most often delivers his direction to us, his instructions for us, one step at a time. Writing in Psalm 119, he, he said this, he said to the Lord, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That, that light, that illumination from the Lord, it extended just as far as that next step would take him. And David was teaching us there that God guides us in his ways one step at a time. And you know what happens is as we string enough days together and they become good days, what happens is we get a good season. And you string enough good seasons together, you have the opportunity to have a good life, a life that honors God, a life that makes a difference. But all of it begins with the heart that looks to God for guidance, for that specific direction needed even in a single day of life. Discover your destiny for that day. The second element we find in this passage is this. We need to seek perspective on the path. Now, the very next words in this psalm says this. Teach me thy paths. Now, I love the word teach here. Uh, We, again, might understand the word teach means to be instructed, but it's even bigger than that. It, It includes the process of learning. One definition means to be made skillful. Now, with that definition in mind, I I want you to think of what David was saying. He was saying, in essence here, God, I know you will show me where you would have me to go, but I don't have the skill to get there on my own. Would you give me the perspective needed for the path that you have placed me on? That's a good prayer to pray. God, show me not just where you want me to go, but would you tell me how it is that I get there? I had a friend call me last uh, summer. He was preparing for a family vacation. He lives on the East Coast, and he said, Steve, I wanted to talk to you. I'm coming out with my kids. They're teenagers, and they wanted to see the sights in Southern California. He said, I know a few things. We want to go to the beach. We want to go to Disneyland. He said, I don't know why, but my kids want to drive through Hollywood and see if... And he said, I know it's going to be hot, not the best time of year for it, but he said, I'd like to go to Palm Desert and play some golf. He said, would you help me to order this trip? And so I began to tell him it might be good to start here, and you won't want to be on that freeway at that time. And I I tried to do my best to orchestrate that trip for him so that sequentially it made the best sense possible. I, I was trying to use my local knowledge to help him. And really, that's the heart of David in this passage. He was saying, God, I need to know where to go. Beyond that, I'm going to need your help on how to get there. And so he prays, teach me thy paths. You see, knowing where to go without the knowledge of how to get there, it's even more frustrating than not even knowing where to go in the first place. And one key to having a great day is to begin understanding that we cannot create one on our own. We just don't know how to prepare for a day we've never lived before. We have no idea what we're going to encounter along the way. You see, Paul reminds us this in 2 Corinthians 3. He said, you know, it's not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. And so we have to be humble enough to come to the Lord for that direction and for that very specific guidance for the journey itself. We've got to be humble as we come. And the good news there is this. When we're humble, God helps us not to stumble. That's how God works. In James 4 and verse 10, the Bible says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. David teaches us that to have a great day, we need to seek God's wisdom for where he'd have us to go. We need to ask him for help to know how to make the steps before us. And then we see next here, the third thought, follow your leader in faith. You need to follow your leader in faith. Now, On into verse 5, David says this next. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. So let's put this all together. David's prayer begins with, God, would you tell me where it is I need to go today? Because without you, I I won't know. God, would you give me the direction for for this day? And and then he advances that prayer to go on to say, and and God, would you show me the way? Because you can tell me the destination, but... I won't know how to get there without direction. And and then he comes to this portion of it, and it's as though he says, "Um, God, do you think you could just go with me? 
Would you personally lead the way and I will follow you in faith? This is a great prayer that David's praying. It's a model for each of us. A few years ago, I was preaching in Australia for a dear friend of mine, Pastor Robert Bax. Many of you know him. And uh, I was to speak the last morning, and then I was going to take a, a, a late morning flight from Rockhampton, where he is, to Sydney, and uh, there wouldn't be enough time to transfer to an international flight getting out, so I was going to have to overnight in Sydney. And, and Pastor Bax, being a great friend, said, Steve, you might as well make the most of that afternoon you're going to get there and uh, enjoy the evening. Sydney's a great city, and it is. And he said, you know, when you get off, there's a shuttle. You can go here, and, and uh, you can take a ferry and see the harbor. And he began to tell me all of these things he could do. And the more he talked, the more nervous I got. You see, I'm the kind of traveler where I want to know where do I need to be, and I want to get to that place. And uh, he began to talk about all the fun I could have, all the things that could be done. And the more he talked, I just thought, you know, I'm not so sure about that. But in the midst of that conversation, he stopped and he said, hey, Steve, what if, what if I just made that leg of the trip with you? What if I were to fly from Rockhampton to Sydney and I'll just hire a car? That's how he said it, rather than rent a car. He said, why don't I just hire a car? And uh, man, we can see the sights. I want you to know that's exactly what we did. With, with him not just telling me where to go and how to get there, with him joining me in the journey, man, I went places I never could have gone on my own. I had perfect peace all along the way. Why? Because there was a guide who'd been there before I could trust him in the course of the journey. And that, in a sense, is what David is doing here. He's saying, God, let's just make this trip together. I'll follow you wherever you lead. And, and God, it would just be great to spend the time with you. And we can make this memory as we go. And friends, that approach always leads to a great day because what happens is you go where you're supposed to go, you make the best decisions as you move forward, and you get to fellowship with God each step of the way. But there's an added blessing here. You see, life has a way of requiring that each of us would endure difficult and sometimes frightening experiences. But you know, when you travel with God, you can handle it all. David said here, for thou art the God of my salvation. He said, God, you are present tense, the God of my salvation. And we know that God had had occasions where he'd entered into David's life and, and he'd saved him from various threats and dangers. This word salvation is a great word. It, it's defined, and I want to give this definition. It means deliverance, rescue, safety, welfare, happiness, and David had known by experience that God is faithful, and he knew by faith that God would never let him down. And he was saying when he asked God to lead him in life, he was saying, God, and I, I know you're going to be a great guide because you're the God of my salvation. You're going to be there to deliver and rescue and keep me safe. You're going to meet my needs. He learned that going with God made the trip so much safer and so much simpler. You see, it was David who would write in that very well-known 23rd Psalm these words, he said, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I want you to notice that David said, as I follow the Lord, he's going to lead me in that right path. But even in the midst of that right path, he said, there are times where you're going to go through a valley, the valley of the shadow of death. Yet he had the audacity to proclaim that in the midst of that time and in that place, he said, I will fear no evil. How could he say such a thing? Because he could say, for thou art with me. He said, you know, God, you're the God of my salvation, and wherever you are, there's no reason for fear to grip my heart. Listen, I want you to know it does not matter where life takes you. When you are with the Lord, there is no need for fear. This time in which we're living is a time for caution. We've all been given counsel and advice on how to remain as safe as possible during this time. It's certainly a time to be careful. But friends, you need to know today, this is not a time to be gripped by fear. There's never a time in the, in the life of a child of God to live absolutely perplexed by what we're going through because we have a God who, if we know him as our Savior, he is always the God of our salvation. Think of that. Because David said, thou art with me, he was stating a truth that we all can claim. Instructive, those words were for us. In 1812, missionary Henry Martin was serving in India and Persia. 
In addition to his many duties as a missionary, church planner, he was also working on a translation of the Bible into the Persian language. And, and it was in this season that a terrible plague came into the land. On October 16th, this 31-year-old missionary wrote these words in his journal. He said, to all appearance, the present year will be the most perilous than any I have seen. But if I live to complete the Persian New Testament, my life after that will be of less importance. But whether life or death be mine, may Christ be magnified in me. If he has work for me to do, I cannot die. That final statement's kind of been paraphrased this way. I am immortal till Christ's work for me is done. Immortal in Christ. Friends, when you begin to fathom the greatness of God, you can come to the place where you can claim the words of the Apostle Paul in Philippians 1 and verse 21 when he said, for me to live, oh, that's Christ. And to die, oh, that's gain. He said, I'm, I'm going to live for Jesus every moment of my life, knowing that eternal life began the moment I accepted him. And, and he said, I will have courage as I follow the Lord. There's never a reason to live under the bondage of fear. God has you. And if you're a believer, you have him. That leads to the final thought. I want to encourage you finally today, see it through and see what God can do. The final words of verse 5 say this, on thee do I wait all the day. Man, this final statement, it's as deep as it is wide. So much is being communicated in those few words. The word wait here refers to an expected hope. He wasn't just waiting to pass the time. He was waiting with a heart of expectation. It was an expected hope. David was saying, you know, I have every reason to believe that God is up to something good in the world and he's up to something good in my life and I just can't wait to see what he's going to do next. On thee do I wait all the day. That expression all the day is, is a great expression as well. It's defined this way, total, in all, all, whole, everything. Here's the point. David gave every ounce of himself to the Lord that day. For every ounce of the day, his, his commitment was complete. Because of his commitment to see it through, he just knew that he would then see what only God can do. The reality today is not everybody gets to see all the good that God can do. That's the fact. It's only those who trust God in this way. His direction and his companionship come as we live by faith. In Psalm 107, the Bible puts it this way in verses 23 and 24. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Those are the ones, the ones that, that go to the sea, the Bible says, and, and they, they are in a place that would have been a place of fear for the mind of that day. And, and the Bible's saying those that trust God with faith, they're the ones who are going to see the works of God and his wonders in the deep. The picture is that of trusting the Lord in the journey of your life. This time in which we're living, it's been strange for all of us. And I have to tell you that I'm learning so much, and I'm so thankful for that. I love our church family, and for that reason, I, I love to do the work of the ministry, and I want to do all that God would have me to do, and sur surely God can use that, and he has indeed called all of us to work, and I want to be as busy as I can possibly be for the Lord, but you know, in this season where I've been forced to take my hands off the wheel, so to speak, uh, it's been amazing for me to see that our church has not just done well. Coastline, you've done remarkably well. I mean, again, these aren't easy times. They're very unusual, but I know of souls who've been saved and needs are being met and ministry is ongoing. And it's been a great lesson for me in a season where it seems like there's less control that I have than ever before. I've learned that God's in great control. I've, I've been reminded once again that this is his church and he can build it himself just fine. So what's for us to do to have a good day every day, all the day? Well, we need to follow God's path. God, where would you have me to go? We, we need to seek his direction. God, how do I get there? And we need to invite him into our journey and follow him in faith. And when we do that, we get to see it through and see what only he will do. Imagine with me what our life would begin to look like if we appropriated this heart to the way we lived.
Imagine if, if we welcomed each day with, God, what do you have for me today? And how am I going to get there? Oh, God, go with me. I'll follow you in faith. I just want to see what you can do. I'm trusting you each step of the way. I would imagine that we would conclude a whole lot more days looking back and saying, that was a great day. Maybe not easy. Maybe not always comfortable. But a great day because I made the progress that the Lord would have me to make. And I believe as we have that mindset, that heartbeat for the Lord, we'll begin to see an exponential increase in the impact of our lives for good and for God. Maybe today as you're listening, I'm talking about going to God in prayer and asking for direction and for guidance and his companionship and on. But maybe today in your heart, your thought is, you know, I'm just not sure that I have that kind of relationship with God. I, I don't know that we're on talking terms exactly like that. Well, the beautiful news of all of this, as I said when we got started, we're a gospel-centered church. All of it comes out of the message of the gospel, the reality that because of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross, that we can come to him seeking forgiveness of sins and the assurance of a home in heaven when we die. And if you're listening to this and you're not 100% certain that you have that relationship with God, may this be the day that you make sure of that. And for each of us, May this be a day where we spend some time praying to the Lord, asking him to help us as we move forward in life. Let's pray. Our Father, we are so grateful uh, for the opportunity to just receive such clear instruction from this passage. And Lord, may we develop a heart like David's, a heart that longs to go where you would have us to go, that seeks for direction that only you can give as a sovereign God, that seeks for your companionship along the way, and that trusts you as the ultimate Savior that you are. And God, I pray that our testimony would be that we are seeing some things done in our lives that only you could do. Be honored and glorified through it all. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name.